Hello, I am the budget manager at the city of Bloomington. My name is Kari Carlson and thanks for joining us for this 2022 city of Bloomington budget information session. So today, sorry about that pause. Today we're going to be um, going over some changes in the economy um, have to do with the pandemic and what has happened since December, 2020, when we last approved our uh, last budget, that was the 2021 budget and property tax levy. We're going to talk about uh, what services do city property taxes fund, talk about some budget challenges that we're uh, working on, going to go over a 2022 budget and property tax timeline. <clears throat> and then just want to let you know where you can find information about the budget and also where you can provide feedback on the city's budget that we can share with the executive leadership team and city council. So I will start off with uh, talking about changes in the economy and in addition to revenue that we receive from property taxes, the city's general fund also receives revenue from local lodging and admission taxes. And the pandemic greatly reduced this revenue source. As you can see here on the slide in 2019, local lodging and admission taxes that were received into the general fund were 10.4 million. Last year in 2020, that was only 3.2 million. And we were um, budgeting for this year only 4.8 million. So we are not projecting that it will come back to the pre-pandemic levels until um, for like five years. So um, this is one uh, definite challenge that we're facing in our uh, city finances. However, um, what we have been experiencing in recent months, like the summer, is that the economy is beginning to recover. It does vary by, by industry and, and by sector, but the, um, like the lodging industry is getting better. The occupancy in our hotels in, in Bloomington is improving and so is retail. There seems to be some pent up travel and shopping demand. Um, the Mall of America traffic is definitely a lot more these days. And then when the governor's executive orders ended and the mask man mandate ended, local state of emergency was lifted, um, things were more opened up, businesses opening up. Um, of course, that's in more uh, recent days, it's a little concerning with the Delta variant. We're hoping that goes through quickly. Um, it doesn't cause a damper on the economy again. Um, another thing that's happened is housing market has continued to skyrocket and um, however commercial values have decreased um, through the pandemic. And here's some examples of what we're talking about. Um, from last year, market valuations have changed significantly and residential properties have increased by 6.2%. Industrial and apartment properties have also increased, whereas commercial properties have decreased by 9.2%. And so like, the median value home has increased from 286,400 to 307,200 in one year. And what this is doing is this declining commercial um, and then increased residential values is going to cause a shift in the overall tax burden towards the residential payers. So, the 2021 property tax amount that was levied by the city was around $66.5 million. And even if that same exact amount is levied for the city property taxes next year in 2022, more of the share of property taxes will be paid by residential properties than commercial properties next year because residential values have increased while the commercial values have declined. And then here's a graph just showing what has happened with the uh, 2021 taxes that are being paid now compared to how those how that total tax levy is going to be allocated across the different properties in 2022. 
So the, the blue piece of the pie there is the residential at 40% of the gross tax capacity has increased to 42% for what is going to be used for the allocating out the 2022 property taxes, whereas the commercial industrial has gone from 50% down to 47%, so it's shifted. And what that means to a median value home, so for 2021, the monthly city property tax for the median value home is $91.06 a month if you split it up between the, um, the months. And the impact of this shift from commercial to residential, even with no increase to the overall tax levy, will be an increase to the median value home next year um, to $98.19 a month. So that's a $7.13 increase due to shifting market values. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is what's happened um, since 2020. So if you were following along with the city budget and city finances last year, you know that we were um, had some major issues. We, as I said, the lodging and emission taxes um, were way down and um, that was causing a lot of strain on the budget. Expenses were cut. We had a kind of a hiring. Um, we, held vacant positions open. Uh, we had some services that were reduced, some projects that were put off. Um, but fortunately, um, lodging emission taxes have improved. We also did receive some federal assistance grants and that has helped some of that strain on city budgets. Um, our property tax collections, by the end of last year, we collected almost 100% of all of our property taxes. We weren't sure if that would be the case uh, as we were going through but the budget last year and that was a, also a big concern. Um, so that was uh, very good news for the city that, that, that we did collect the majority of our property taxes. Um, also what's happened since December 2020 are that the city buildings that um, had to be temporarily closed due to the pandemic have started opening, programs um, have been coming back that were not available last year. Um, for example, Creekside just opened last month. And then until just recent days, um, employees have been transitioning back to work um, in person as opposed to remotely or doing some like a hybrid schedule. Now with the latest, the Delta variant, that's kind of been pushed back where people are, um, if they can work from home again, um, unfortunately. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is just what service do, do the city property taxes fund? So um, I'll just start off by saying that the city's portion of the annual um, residential property tax statement comprises only about one third of the overall property tax bill. So the property tax bill does not all come to the city. The other two thirds, um, about a third of that goes to the school district and another third to Hennepin County. Um, and that, as I said before, the, the city levies $66.5 million. Or that's what the levy was for last year or for this year, for 2021. And the majority of that, um, more than 80%, funds like public safety, police and fire, public works, um, and parks and recreation. And then about 8% of the tax levy, it funds principal and interest payments for debt that's been issued to fund large capital improvements for facilities, road construction, and parks. Here's some um, challenges that I'd like to share. So as I said before, um, with the strain of the reduced lodging uh, taxes and admission taxes uh, that do help to fund city services, department budgets were reduced uh, for 21 or frozen so that it would prove our financial stability, and uh, but yet we're, we're still offering the majority of the services for residents and for businesses in Bloomington, um, but our costs have increased. The supply and material costs for capital projects have experienced a large increases, and, um, and there are a lot of critical improvements that are needed for city facilities infrastructure. Um, a lot of things were built um, 50 years ago, and they are definitely showing their age and need some um, investment, reinvestment. We've also had some challenges. We do have a paid on-call um, 
fire department model where we um, do have a few staff that are full-time city employees, but most of our fire department is paid on call. And it's been uh, challenging to have enough paid on call firefighters to staff the city leads. And so there's definitely some challenges in the budget um, being able to support our uh, fire department. Next, I'm going to share a budget and property tax timeline just to let you know um, what is coming up. And uh, later in this month, um, on August 23rd, there's a city council meeting that is mainly dedicated to discussing the 2022 budget. Um, that will of course be um, live and in the council chambers, it will also be recorded. And then September 13th is the council meeting that we are um, looking at to for the council to set the 2022 preliminary tax levy and budget. And when that preliminary tax levy and budget is set, that's the highest it could be. It could be lower than that, um, the final one, but it can't be any higher. And then the that preliminary tax levy and budget is due to Hennepin County by the end of September. Um, we're going to have some public budget information sessions in October. So those uh, dates will be coming. Um, and then November 22nd is a city council meeting that's also set aside for that um, a budget discussion and, and just honing in on that final tax levy and budget. And then December 6th is our official truth and taxation public hearing. And then December 31st, end of the month of December, end of the year is when the final tax levy and budget is due to Hennepin County. So where can you find city budget information? We have a new web page on the city's website that is for the budget. And you can get to it from a variety of different ways on the website through the finance department. You can go use this short link here to get there. And there is a lot of information. Um, this presentation is going, to, is going to be there as well as links to our um, Let's Talk Bloomington website which is on that page as well. And also we have all of the budget books that we published from last year and previous years are there as well as presentations on the budget and direct links to council meetings where the budget's been discussed. So everything about the budget is all in one place. Um, if you have feedback that you'd like to share on the budget, um, you can share them. Um, uh, I will be at the outside the council chambers on Wednesday, August 11th during the uh, midweek music farmers market. So if you want to stop by and talk and share information, um, I'd love to talk to you then. And we're going to have some additional um, sessions with the public in October. As I said, we have a Let's Talk Bloomington webpage where you can ask questions and leave feedback for the council and for executive leadership team. You can always just email me or um, you can call me at my phone number's right there. My email is there. Um, and then there's also the truth and taxation public hearing that you can um, either attend live in the council chambers or um, we do also have an option um, to do it virtually as well. So, um, Thank you for watching. I hope you found that informative. And if you have any questions about budget, um, I'd love to hear from you or feedback that you'd like to share. Thank you.